close and special friend of mine. His name is, I like to call him Red Yaakov. He is a rare individual. You will not meet too many people like him. He is very rare, almost like a an endangered species for all of us. <laughs> he, he, he is incredibly special, and I've had the merit of being his good friends, and I love it when he comes to my house for Shabbos meals. Everyone here is invited to my house for Shabbos. All right. Yeah. Yeah. We're and we have, we have today um, a good friend, Rabbi Yaakov Vizilovich, who is from Poland. He's, he's from Poland. He's a landsman from, I believe, the city of Chesnachovia. Yeah. Am I saying it right? Okay, good. He's from Chesnachovia. And uh, he has a beautiful voice, and he, he's going to say a little story of how he came here. Not, not too many, um, you know, religious uh, Jews at, at, at a young age are coming out of being born in Poland. So I want to call up Rabbi Yaakov to please share a little bit of his story and, and some songs with us. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. We can't hear you. Oh, good afternoon. Good afternoon. It's so beautiful to be here today. Because each of you, it's so special. And I, I really hope that at some point maybe I'll be able to actually speak to each of you and hear your story. For now, I, I was asked to, to share with you my story. It won't be long, don't worry. <laughs> As uh, Rabbi mentioned, I was born in Częstochowa, Poland, in 1988. At that time, there was no Jewish schools, there was no chedorim, there was no yeshivas. So my mother sent me to a public preschool, a non-Jewish preschool. When I was about six, seven years old, I came back home from preschool and I told my mother what the teacher told us that day. Mom, tomorrow we cannot eat meat. We are going to church. <laughs> and the priest is going to pull ashes over our head. Right. My mother said to me, Kuba. My Polish name is Kuba, K-U-B-A, Kuba. She said, Kuba, I have something to tell you. Sit down. <clears throat> if you do not want to eat meat tomorrow, no problem. I will not give you meat to eat but you will not go to church. So I asked, why not? So she, so she told me, because you are Jewish. Okay. So from that moment on, I knew I'm Jewish, but I didn't know what it means to be Jewish. I wanted to learn, but at the time there was no really way to learn about Yiddish guys. There was no one to ask my question. And at the same time, I was told, don't tell anyone that you are Jewish. But what does a child do when he has a secret and he's told not to tell anyone? <laughs> of course, I told a friend of mine, and the next day, my friends in school were calling me a dirty Jew. So I learned not to tell anyone that I'm Jewish. I kept it as a secret. My mother was the daughter of two Holocaust survivors. They survived the Lodz Ghetto and Czestochowa labor camp, Hasag. And 
and and whatever they did after the war, even though it was impossible to keep Yiddish type after the war, <coughs> they still tried to keep some things. My grandmother would uh, light Shabbos candles. My grandfather would, would make Pesach seders. So that my mother, as a child, knows what Pesach is all about, knows a little bit about the, the religion, Jewish culture. Religion. And later, my mother became the head of the Jewish community in Czestochowa. She was the head for 43 years. She taught the Jewish community there about the Jewish holidays. I wanted to learn what it means to be Jewish. Twice a year there was a Jewish camp, summer and winter camp in Poland called Louder Camp. Created by Louder Foundation for the Polish Jews, for the Holocaust survivors that survived, for their children and for their grandchildren. So that they can come together to one place, to the summer camp, a winter camp, and they can sing together Jewish songs. They can learn about what Shabbos is, what other holidays are. And that's where I went as a little kid with my mother. Let's make the story a little bit sh short. At the age of 12, my mother wanted me to have a bar mitzvah, so she con contacted the chief rabbi of Poland, Rabbi Michael Shudrich, and she asked him, can you prepare him for bar mitzvah? <coughs> He said, sure, of course, but does he have a bris? Mm -hmm. And my mother said, no, there's no Moab living in Poland. No. Mm -hmm. So he said, no, he has to have a bris first. <laughs> okay. I mentioned Rabbi Shlomo Kalbach. So this is going to be a song few songs by Rabbi Shlomo Kalbach.